Hello, this is Bob Hollis with the Mobius Network and a quick overview of how to use Fabric, a development uh, application for Joomla uh, that you can use to uh, collect and display data on your website. So we have to be on Joomla 2.5.1 and I'm going into the administrative area of components and Fabric. And you'll see here that you've got a uh, menu that you can select from to go to directly what you're looking for. The most important areas that you use most frequently are uh, forms, groups, and elements. And so I'm going to go into Fabric and into, uh, I'll just go to the main area here. And you see that you get a, a layout for each of the areas that we've looked at as well as an area for useful links. So you can go to the forum or documentation area for help. We've got sample data here that you can look at or do an upgrade or reset if you need to. That Fabric is a really great uh, form builder, but it's much more than that. Just imagine a, a database where you have a go to form, you submit data into the form from the front end of the website, and then you can choose which uh, which data to display somewhere else on your website. And you can limit the access levels to various groups and display different information for each. So Fabric is uh, comprised of several different things that all work together. You've got lists, forms, groups, and elements. Elements are basically your fields. And then groups collect the elements and then in a form, you can choose which uh, groups to use and display in your form. So if I were to go into forms and then create a new form, and let's just say that we'll call it uh, registration. And you can add some intro text here and put whatever you like. And the thing about Fabric is that there are just so many options to look through. It's a, a really great program with a lot of different choices to make, but that can also make it a little bit complicated to get used to. But they're pretty intuitive when you step back and look at them. Uh, you can see which buttons you want to show on the form whether or not what you want to hide or show the button, what you want the label to be. Uh, usually when I do it, I just have a couple of, like, a submit button and nothing else, or possibly a reset, depending on the form. And then whether or not to record it in the database, what the table name is going to be. And then it will ask you about groups, and I won't get into too many details, but you'll see uh, that we will have one a group created with the same name as this form. And then this is in getting into layout and the different things that you might want to do there. Uh, you can see what these options are. They're all pretty intuitive, but you can hover over any to see what they're supposed to be about if it's not clear from the label directly. And then the plugins make, uh, make it a really powerful component. You can set up plugins to do a lot of different things, including, oh, I may not have any uh, set up for this. I'll have to take a look at that. I just now installed it, and I may not have installed any of the plugins uh, options yet. So that's how you would create a form. I'm going to go ahead and save and close, and make it publish. And you can get to different uh, things that all work together through various places in Joomla, like with most others. So we'll go into groups now. And we have a group automatically called registration. And it's got, by default, two elements. And those are the standard elements that get applied to any table. Um, we'll take a look at those in a minute. But in here, you can put a, create a label for your group and look at what form it's associated with, whether or not it's published, again, some intro text or just uh, layout information. And where most of the work is done is here in elements. So think about elements as your forms, for example, uh, each field in a form. 
So if I wanted to create a new element that might be called uh, full name, I can do it like that. And really, I would suggest uh, we've got a label down here. This is what the public's going to see. And a WYSIWYG editor to make it bold or set up your labels how any, any way you like. I would recommend for the name itself using all lowercase underscores uh, that represent, well, what the what the real label is. But at the same time, again, no spaces. Don't start with a number. Uh, label it for Linux. And that you'll tend to run into less problems if you do that as a habit. And you can insert any document here. Treat this just like any other article in terms of how much content you can put in. And then over on this side is where we have most of the options um, for this. So of course, again, published, whether or not you want to add to the page title. Here's where you would set access levels, public, registered, or special. In this case, we don't have any custom levels set up. So whether or not you want to show it in the list and link to details or not, allow ordering or not what the heading label might be. So we'll call this full name. And then there's some neat things you can do if you're collecting numbers. Um, I'm just showing you this so you see what's there. I usually don't do much in any of these, but down here in calculations, if you're collecting data in numbers and you want to do some basic calculations, you can choose to sum the column total, uh, collect an average, a median, the number of records, so basically the number of entries, or do custom calculations down here uh, to get whatever data that you want. So that makes things pretty nice if you're, um, say, totaling votes or something of that nature. Validations, this is where you can choose, for example, to uh, make sure that the field is not left empty. So if I choose not empty, I could put as the error message, please enter your full name. So if somebody uh, does not complete this full name field and they try to submit, this validation is going to fail, and they'll get an error message saying, please enter your full name. And I could add as many of these as I like and there are a lot of different options to choose from. So I will save and close. Oh, and then you've got JavaScript options over here as well. And you can do things like, for example, well, you can see all the different things that you can make happen upon uh, choosing this element. And then what would happen with it. Okay, so conditionals. And then uh, I'm going to save and close that. Oh, looks like I left uh, something out here. Group, registration, and plugin. This is where you choose the uh, the type of the element. So again, what you would normally think of as the field. So we've got a button option, checkbox, database join, date, display, drop down. Uh, you can see what each of these are. Image, internal link, text area, or user. Um, you, can, you can choose from any of them based on what you're trying to do. And you'll see that there's one here called file upload. And that's the one that you would choose if you want to give people the option of uploading an attachment, such as a resume. So I believe I've now taken care of both of these, and I'm choosing the field option, which is just the basic uh, text. And I should drop down and show you this, though. But depending on the type of plugin that you choose, you get different options here. And in this case, since I picked field, it's giving me an option for how many, how wide I want one allowed to be, um, whether or not it's hidden, whether or not it's a password, so it would show you know asterisks or dots instead of the actual entry. Um, you can see what each of these are, and you can set limitations on the length 
and formatting depending on what type of information you're going to collect. And there's so many uh, different options here to look at. I, I don't want to go into detail right now, but the best way to learn them is to experiment and take a look at them. So now I will save and close this. And you see that our new item was saved. So now if I, uh, now you'll notice too that our nomenclature full underscore name matches the native date underscore time uh, type of labeling format, no spaces and no caps. You want to keep that clean for the Linux code. Now, now that this is there, you can imagine that, say, this were a, a completed form. We had all of the data that we're trying to collect in there. Then to add this to the site, I would just go out to Main Menu, Add New Menu Item. And when I select Menu Item Type, I'm going to select Fabric. So here's Fabric, a form, a list, package, or visualization. I didn't get into all of these different items yet, but uh, the form is what we're looking for. This is the entry form. The list would be a uh, what you want to display on the site somewhere based on entry. And again, you don't have to display everything. You might collect 15 pieces of data and only display five. Uh, package is if you've got different uh, options to lay out. It's not really very necessary for most of the things you do. In visualization, this gives you some specialization options, including like a Google map. So if you had people entering data into a database that included geocoding information, you know, address, uh, you can create a visualization that would show those entries on a map. So for this purpose, I'm going to choose form, and I will just call it fabric demo form. And we'll put that on the top, uh, make it, again, special. And for, I'm going to put it right under here under the home again. And only admins, again, can see this, so we don't have to worry too much about that. And over here, I just choose the form. And if I had more than one form, obviously, I can select from them. You can go through here and see all the different options available. You won't need to do much with most of them. Now, this is something that shows up in the uh, in browser URLs, in, in the um, uh, browser title bars. So you'll want to fill this in, but not show the heading. And that way it, it looks a little nicer on websites when it comes up, or on uh, in browsers when it comes up. But if you put it in to show the heading, then oftentimes you'll get the effect of a duplicate title. If this was something you want to publicize, you could put the meta description in here that should be legible and make sense grammatically. People actually read that. And meta keywords down here, which are just separated by commas, and those are the words that you'd want uh, for your site to come up on in a search engine. And you can see where all this is assigned. That's pretty clear. So I'll uh, save and close this. And then if I go back out and take a look at the site from the front end, all right, now if I go back in the home, fabric demo form, you can see we've got a registration form with just asking for a full name because that's the only item that we're showing on that form right now. Uh, element would might be a better term to use. So that's a basic overview of how you use Fabric. So to create a, um, a registration form where you want somebody to sub submit a resume, just create elements and questions, uh, for, or elements in the form that you like for each of the pieces of data you want to collect, and then include an element that allows a file upload. And uh, all that information can be collected in the database in Joomla. If you have any questions, Bob Hollis at the Mobius Network dot com.